All right, Shalom. First off, and for most as always, I want to say, Call Halayim La, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakudash. Double honor be unto the elder apostles of Great Millstone that do rule and teach well. And of course, as always, I want to say, Shalom to you, Akim out there that's pushing the truth through the spirit, through the power, and through the name of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakudash. So this lesson is going to be titled, Don't Lose Your Cool, Stay Patient, okay? Don't lose your cool and remain patient, all right? Now, you know, this world can be very, very vexing because it's under the rulership of the wicked. You know, and being that it's, it's, it's under the you know rulership of the wicked, everything is evidently upside down. It's not in its rightful order. You know, things vex you, you know, from time to time when you see things and hear things, you know, regarding wickedness. But you always got to keep in mind, do not lose your cool. Okay. Rule your spirit, remain patient. And this and then what I'm saying is not only towards you, but towards myself as well. OK, because really your spirit, have a patience, you know, that's that's not going to be, you know, uh, learned overnight. Now, of course, the, the um, scriptures say that, you know. Um, in a quick understanding, you see. But. All things that we, you know, learn as truth, you know, go through is going to come forth with experience. You see, it comes forth with experience. That's why the scriptures say, you know, a man, a man uh, through much travel has gained much experience. You see. So we have to remain, you know, of course, humble, remain faithful, but remain patient. OK, remain, you know, spiritual, you see. Because Yahweh Shai, when he came on the scene, you know, and when he, you know, came, you know, um, down earth in the, in this, you know, in, in that in the flesh, you know, he he was about you know the Most High's business. He was about Yahweh's business. You see, and he kept it spiritual at all times. He didn't he he didn't get out of character. You know, he didn't um he didn't um. Uh, be somebody that he wasn't he was just you know uh, uh on a mission all right doing the lord's will you see and that's how we have to you know uh, maneuver we gotta continue to you know keep our eyes on the prize you see and keep pushing forward man and looking forward towards towards salvation all right so this is the starting off this is the book of <clears throat> second peter Excuse me, Second Peter uh, 2 and verse 7. It says, And delivered just lot, vexed with the food the conversation of the wicked. Okay, now let me start up a little bit. All right, let me start up. Really start by one, but you know, for time's sake, I'm gonna start at verse uh, six. Second Peter 2 and 6, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Now, as you already know that Sodom and Gomorrah was a very ungodly, you know, um, civilization. OK, it was it was a very wicked, you know, place to be, you know, because people, you know, were, you know, moles, tra transformers, you see, just like just like today. As Simon Gomorrah 2.0, you see, there's nothing new under the sun. All right. Just like how America today, Sodom and Gomorrah all over again, you see. And it says, making them an example unto those that sh after should live ungodly. Right. Because Sodom and Gomorrah got destroyed by fire and brimstone. And that was made an example. OK. On how not to be, you know, if you if you are living your life that way. OK. But fast forward to now, these people, <laughs> They still haven't learned. And that's why the Lord is going to, you know, you know, overthrow this place the same way with fire and brimstone. 
but that fire and brimstone is going to be in the form of nuclear missiles. Okay, according to the Holy Bible. All right. Verse seven, it says, and delivered. Okay, delivered just a lot. Right. Uh, a lot was righteous. Okay. And it says vexed with the filthy. Okay, the filthy conversation of the wicked. All right. So Lot was pissed off. You know, Lot was pissed off, man. It says Lot was, uh, I believe you go into the count, the actual count into the account of Sodom and Gomorrah with, you know, Lot. I believe it says that he was outside the gates of the city. So, you know, he was, he didn't want to be amongst those people just like today. You know, we don't want to be amongst these people. But, you know, we're in captivity. You know, we, we had no choice but to be amongst them because, you know, we got jobs. We got to still maneuver in society, you know, but we don't, you know, um, indulge with these people, you know, so to speak. You know, we don't we don't abuse the world. We use it. You see. And it says Lot was vexed. Now, if, real quickly. I want to go into two words. I want to go into conversation and I want to go into the word vexed. All right. So I want to take my time with this lesson and Lord's will. This lesson will be edifying to those who are listening to the Lord's sheep, to those tuning in. Okay. Second Peter two and verse seven on the Blue Letter Bible. The word filthy. Strong's G seven sixty six, as El Gaya, as El Gaya. Right, and the word means. Un, uh, uh, unbridled lust, excess, uh, lasciviousness, outrageous, shamelessness, and that's today, man. People are people have no morals, you know. People are constantly in the flesh here, you see. They overindulge in the flesh, I should say, you know. And they're just ungodly here, you know. That's why it says, you know, uh, verse six, it says that you know, those that after she live ungodly. Okay, and fast forward today, people are here are completely ungodly, man. Okay, now let's go to conversation, and then we can go to uh, Vex. Strong's G391. Anastrafe. 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 And it says manner of life, conduct, behavior, okay, deportment. All right. What does deportment mean? Okay, so so the same thing, you know, mannerisms, behavior. Okay, so these people, you know, their manner of life, you know, vexed a lot. You see, just like how the the, the way that people maneuver in this society, you know, here and in, in the captivity of you know, and and where I live, you know, where I reside right now, my captivity is in America. You see, and and I know many brothers can attest, you know, can vouch on how wicked and how you know, uh, disgusting these people are because of their mindset, because they're under the, the frequency of the wicked rulership of Esau Edom. You see? So being that they're under that control, that vibration, they're going to be wicked. All right. These people out here are just, they're, you know, their behavior, the conduct, the manner of life is completely, is not right. You see? It's not right at all, man. And that's why judgment is going to come. That's why judgment is going to is going to is going to be uh, brought forth from on high from Yahweh Shemal Shai unto this place of uh, uh, Babylon. You see. So that's the meaning of filthy in conversation. Now let's go to uh, vexed. OK. Strong's G twenty six sixty nine. Katapaneo. Katapaneo. And it says uh, to tire down with toil, exhaust with the labor, to afflict or oppress with evils, to make trouble for, to treat roughly. All right, let's see what else it says. Um, oppress. Vex. All right, now real quickly, now if you look up, go on to Google. Excuse me, the uh, word vex. Actually, let's go into online etymology. Let's get that matter of a fact. Let 
Yeah, so so it means the same thing as it, as it says in the Blue Letter Bible. It says to annoy, to to harass, okay, um, to trouble, to attack. You see, so you know, Lot was annoyed. Okay, now you know. Now, if you go into uh, Google, it says uh, the word vex means to be annoyed. Same thing, frustrated or worried, especially with trivial matters. All right, it says um, cause distress to irritate annoy you know so lot was annoyed man you see lot was pissed off all right and you would think you know he had a you know tell himself to you know calm down you know because hey man you gotta look at the scriptures you know it's real life you know sometimes you gotta you know use your imagination just like the apostle kabar said you know and really you know you know look at it at that perspective because it was you know because he was a man living you know, he had to deal with things just like today. So he had, he had a, you know, he had a, you know, he had a, you know, you know, rule of spirit. You see, he was annoyed with that shit, man. Just like today, all this wickedness going on. We got to, we got to, we have to rule our spirit and be patient, you know, uh, you know, uh, be patient towards Yahweh by Shema Shai. Excuse me, be, be patient and wait uh, um, for Yahweh by Shema Shai. Okay. Because right now we can't take matter into our, our own hands and, you know, get carnal and start doing all kinds of you know bs out here nah man that'd be going off that's why yahweh shy he said that if it he said that if it were my kingdom my servants will fight all right why you think uh real quickly i'm gonna get back to my initial point but let me i'm gonna get this quick precept um what spirit All right, it's the book of Luke. Let's see, Luke chapter 9 and verse 55. And it says, actually, let me see. Verse 54, Luke 9, 54. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, would thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not to is, is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village, right? Man, so you had, you know, John, you had um, you know, James John say, Hey. You know, are, are you know, are you gonna bring fire down from heaven just like Elijah did? You see, and how shy he said, "Nah, man, I'm not gonna do that at all." You see, you gotta, you gotta, you know, remain spiritual. You know, you know, why, why would I do that? You know, in captivity. You see, how shy didn't come. You know, uh, uh, on this scene back, you know, back in that time to to fight. You know, the Romans. All right, he came to, uh, uh, to, to be obedient. All right, under death. Okay, to be, to be obedient. Okay, so that way he can fulfill his mission while being here, all right, and, and, and be that sacrificial lamb and die for our sins. You see, he came to save us, man. And guess what? He's coming back again to, to save us, all right, redeem us, to be delivered, man. Okay. So right now is not, not the time to, you know, uh, 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 you know, buck up against you know, uh, uh, this system in a carnal manner because we do that spiritually. All right. That's why the scriptures say in the book of Corinthians 10, all right, in verse four or five, I believe it says that the weapons of our warfare is not carnal, but mighty through the most high by the pulling down of strongholds, man. You see, so the things that we do is not of our own will. It's of the most high's will because he's controlling everything. The most high controls us. Okay. And the most high is using us all right, on the right hand side to be righteous uh, mouthpieces, all right, uh, vessels to bring forth his word to further condemn this place. And that's and that's uh, uh, how we're taking this place down spiritually. OK, not with actual weapons and guns and swords. No, by the word of Yahweh by Shemal Shai, you see, by this glorious gospel. OK, by pushing forth prophecy, which is the words of Yahweh by Shemal Shai, which is the testimony of Yahweh Shai. OK. So, yeah, man, we got to continue to. 
you know, we got to be patient, man. We have to be patient. We got to keep, keep staying the course, man. Keep our eyes on the prize, you see? So this is the book of uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and verse uh, 7. And actually, I'll start at verse uh, 7, go to verse 9. And it says, Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad, and a gift destroy the heart. Right, man? Oppression maketh the wise man mad, you see? Because we've been opened up to this truth. You know, we've been, we've been, uh, we've been, uh, uh, um, awakened, you see, and us being awakened, our eyes are open. It's like, damn, everything around us is, is really wicked. Our people, two thirds of our people are, are just completely through. They're wicked. You know, the heathen is over us. Esau's over us. All right. Right now you got, you know, the woman over everything right now. But guess what? That's privacy, you know, a, a, a new thing in the earth that a woman shall can pass a man, you see? So everything that we've been, you know, um, that we've been open up to, that's that can piss you off. That can vex you, you see? But knowing those things in the plan of scriptures, we have to remain solid. We got to remain, you know, uh, uh, keep that, you know, keep that, uh, that sound mind. All right. We got to we got to keep our spirit intact, man. All right. Don't lose, you know, uh, uh, the course of the mission. Stay the course. And it says verse eight and the gift destroyed the heart. Right, man. A bribe, you know, Jake, you know, you know, you know, if you bribe me, if you bribe, you know, especially Jake, they'll take that shit, man. <laughs> you see, that's why that's why, you know, we, you know, we set our our, our treasures you know, uh, towards heaven, you know, we don't set our treasures upon earth where moth and rust do corrupt and where thieves do uh, break through and steal. All right. Verse eight. And it says, uh, better the end of a thing than the beginning and the patient and spirit is better than a proud and spirit. Right, man. The patient and spirit is better than a proud and spirit. You see, because, you know, uh, uh, us having patience, you know, we're suffering for the right reasons. OK, because the word patience means to suffer. And we're suffering for, you know, how about Shemal Shai, man? You see? And waiting upon the Lord, you know, that's faith, man. You know, waiting, suffering, that's faith. That takes that takes faith to, you know, uh, uh, wait, you know, and to uh, have patience and, and to continue to suffer within a wicked society. All right? That's that's faith. All right? And it says, um, and, the, and the patient spirit is better than the proud spirit, right? Because what, because the scriptures say, Pride go before what? Destruction. You see? Meaning what? Don't take matter into your own hands. Okay? Because doing that, you tripping. All right? You got to rule your spirit, man. And guess what? I'm still learning how to rule my spirit, you know? Because, because a righteous man is going to uh, fall, but get back up again. You see? There's been times when, you know, I had to, you know, rule my spirit at times, you know, because, you know, I was, you know, probably doing a little too much you see but hey sometimes it's gonna happen but that's why i said earlier experience you know you're gonna have to go through certain things and trials to gain that you know that little bit more of experience to know like you know to say like ah now i see what to do and what not to do you see and sometimes if we don't know if we don't know what to do a brother can put you on you see and real quick it says better is the end of a thing than, than the beginning thereof Right, man. Hey, better, 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 you know. Now, even though we're in captivity, you know, we're in th this is the last captivity, you see. So better is the end of a thing than the beginning. All right. I couldn't imagine, you know, still being in chattel slavery, man. Still being in ancient Egypt. Nah, man. We in this last captivity. All right. And not only are we in our, not in our last captivity, but we're in the last days of Esau's society, of Esau's rulership, of Edom, the nation of Edom, being in power. Starting off with the elites of the nation of Edom, the wicked elites, I should say. All right. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning, man. OK. And, and, and just like the book of Sirach says, Sirach 25 and 7, it says that um, how let me get it real quick. Just real quickly. This is the book of Sirach. Um, 
25 and verse 7, it says, There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy, and the tenth I will utter with my tongue. A man that hath joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. Okay? So, yeah, man, you know, we are we are living in beautiful times, man. Okay? We're, we are literally living in times of privacy to further unravel in front of our faces, to further manifest. Okay? And you can clearly see that privacy is manifesting. All right? Or, or should I say, it's continuing to manifest. Okay? MOTB is basically here, around the corner. All right? So things are things are turning up, man. You see, I believe uh, this month, I think, I think today, I believe, you know, I, I have to Google it, you know, um, one more time. But uh, I believe today is going to be like a, a lunar eclipse. A, a brother has sent in the chat, you see. So and, and what's that? That's a sign in the, in, in the heavens, you know, and that, that's a sign of, you know, of, of the uh, of the uh, second coming of Yahweh Shai, you see. The second return of Yahweh Shab Mashiach, man, our savior. All right. So back in Ecclesiastes 7 and verse uh, 9, it says, Be not hasty and thy spirit to be angry, for, ang for anger rests in the bosoms of fools. Right, man. And basically, what does that mean? Control your temper, man. You know? Rule your spirit. Don't lose your cool. Stay patient. And it's easier said than done because some brothers are fiery than others. You see? We got to learn to keep this flesh, you know, on the wraps. You know, we got to learn to keep this flesh in the chokehold. And like I said, it's, it's, easier, it's, it's easier said than done. But that's where discipline is, you know, uh, comes into place. All right? And, uh, and, even, and even the word disciple... You know, because we're disciples of Yahweh Shai. Disciple means what? Go back to the word discipline. All right. So we got to be disciplined as truth. And that's one thing that, you know, a lot of people in America, I'll say they lack. They lack discipline because they're so used to comfort, pleasure, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Because that's all that, that that's all, you know, that the flesh wants. You see, the flesh don't like discipline. You see, so we got to. You know, continue to, you know, uh, control his flesh, but 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 that comes with you know prayer, fasting, you know, applying the scriptures, of course. You know, and then you know once you do that, then all things will will fall into place for your betterment, okay. And then you see the good results. You see, you got not, you got deny the flesh, man. You got to learn how to you got to learn your spirits to keep you cool. You see, don't be angry. You know, because ultimately the Lord is going to avenge us. All right. Let's get that real quick. The Lord is going to avenge us, man. The Lord is going to, you know, um, avenge us by, you know, judging those that offended us. You know, you know, um, uh, 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 judging America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great. OK, so the Lord knows how we feel. All right. The Lord knows what we're going through, man. That's why the Lord is going to avenge his elect. Okay, let's get that real quick. I believe it's the book of Luke. Let's see. Let's see. Yep. That's the book of Luke 18 and verse 7. And shall not the most high avenge his own elect? Was cried day and night unto him? Though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Right, man. So the Lord, Yahweh Shemal Shai, is, is going to take care of us. The Lord is going to avenge us. You know, don't worry. Okay. The Lord is going to, is going to, you know, um, pay back those that, that, that troubled us. You see? Actually, I believe that's in the book of, um, Excuse me. What's that? Um, First Thessalonians and 
or to Second Thessalonians. Let me see. Let me just go a little real quick. Slack here. Okay, yep. Uh, Second Thessalonians 1 and 6. And it says, uh, Seeing it is a righteous thing with the Most High, Yahweh Basham Al Shai, to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Okay, so, hey, man, the scriptures say, you know, um, the Most High is going to avenge you know, uh, his own elect speedily. Okay, so, hey, man, the pain that you went through, the tribulation that you're going through right now, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the offenses that people, you know, cause unto you. Don't worry, man, because the Lord is going to, is going to, uh, handle that. The Lord's going to, the Lord is going to take, take care of them. The Lord's going to deal with them. I should say, you know, just like, uh, those two songs by James Brown that I like a lot, you know, first the, the big payback. I know everybody knows that song. And the uh, other one is called Papa Don't Take No Mess. You see, and who's Papa, you know, the father. Yahweh, man, how about Shemal Shai? You know, the Lord don't take no mess. You know, you you offend his little ones, you know, then hey, what what did Yahweh Shai say? He said, if you well, if you offend these little ones, meaning his men, his servants, then it'd be better for a great millstone be tied around his neck and he'd be casted into the bottom of a sea. And that's harsh right there. That's judgment, you see. That is judgment right there, man. That's why that's why people right now, you know, they gonna you know, let them keep doing what they're doing. Let them keep so-called living, you know. But guess what? A rude awakening is coming for those that offended us, for those that, you know, um, disregard the words and the gospel of Yahweh about Shemal Shai, okay? So let's get this last precept and we can end off on there. That's the book of James. One. Actually, um, I get to the point. James 1 and verse. Oh, is that? Actually, I think it's James 5. Yep. It's like it. James 5 and verse 10, it says, Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashamah Shai. For an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience, right, man? Keep it cool. Be patient. You see, that's what that's that's what this lesson is about. This is a pistol, you know. And like I said earlier, this is going towards myself first and foremost. Because why would I be speaking, you know, this message and bring forth this message to you, Ankim, you know? But not applying it for myself, I'll be a what? A hypocrite, right? So. Hey, man, this is going for myself as well. All right. It says, for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. And hey, man, patience, man, that's a skill. And not a lot of people have that, you know? And if you feel like you don't have patience, well, guess, guess what? Pray for, pray for it, man. Pray for patience, you know? It says, man, it says, uh, it says, uh, if you ask the most high for wisdom, he'll give it to you. You know, you got to believe, though. You know, there's nothing wrong with praying, with praying for patience. There's, there's nothing wrong with praying for more faith. You see, there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with praying for a fortified spirit, a fortified mind. All right. Praying for more discipline. There's nothing wrong with that because you praying for those things. You are praying to, you know, be upgraded in the spirit. And not in the flesh. And people out here, you know, they're praying for vanity, carnal, you know, carnal things. We're praying for, you know, uh, spiritual things, things that can, you know, not only upgrade us, but upgrade the brothers around us, you know, in the ministry. Because, you know, um, once that happens, you know, once you get better, then, you know, the brother next to you gets better. You see? You know, because, you know, the, the acts that you do can rip off from you onto that brother. All right. Then, then now, you know, it's all a beautiful, you know, um, a beautiful machine, you know, just going in motion. You see. Uh, in the back of James 5 and 11, it says, behold, we count them happy, which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job. All right. Real quick. Let's go into the word endure. All right. 
Let's go over that real quick in the Blue Letter Bible. It says, um, broke my back. Strong's G 5278. Hupamano. Hupamano. All right. It says, um, to remain, to tarry behind, to remain, abide, not recede or flee, to preserve, all right, uh, under misfortunes and trials, to hold fast to one's faith, any Yahweh Mashiach, to endure, bear bravely and calmly, all right, hey, man, hey, says, uh, patiently or suffer, so we gotta suffer, man, we gotta, uh, we gotta, uh, we gotta hold that faith, any Yahweh Mashiach, okay, and what the Yahweh Shai say, he said, um, hold that fast which thou hast, man. Let no man take that crown. And that man start, starting off with you because we're our, we're our biggest enemies. We're, we're our own biggest enemies, man. Because why? Because the spirit is, uh, excuse me, the, the, uh, the uh, flesh is contrary uh, to the spirit. You see? So we got to keep, got to keep pushing, man. We got to continue to persevere, man. You see? We got to continue to Push through. Whew, man. And it says, James 5 and 11. You have heard of the patience of Job, right, man? Hey, listen, if you read the account of the book of Job, you can, the first two chapters, one and two, listen, man, the Lord put him through the ringer. And Job still had his faith in the Lord. All right. Go read those accounts, man. And see what Job went through. And use that as an example to further, you know, you, you, you walk in his truth for the better. That's why the scriptures say, you know, things were written for our learning. All right. What's that? Let me get that real quick. Romans 14. I believe it's Romans 14. Is it 14? Okay, 15, excuse me. Romans 15 and verse 4 says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience, there goes that word again, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And right, man, the scriptures comfort us. You see? The scriptures comfort us, man. That's why we can read accounts you know, you know, uh, that can boost our faith, that can comfort us. You know, the comfort, you how say he sent us a comforter. And a comfort is what? A spirit that comes that comes with the scriptures. All right. We have the comforter, man. It's like a it's like a spiritual security blanket, if you will. And, and that's what keeps us, you know, afloat. That's what keeps us, you know, um uh sound minded, man. You know, through Yahweh Bashmah Shai by Shirin Kakodash. All right. And it says um, that we, through patience and, and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. And ultimately, what was hope? Faith. Okay. So let's head back to James 5 and verse 11. And I, I end off one here. And it says, Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job. And have seen the end of the of the Lord, that he that the Lord is very pitiful and of a tender mercy, man. Right, man. The Lord is very merciful. Okay. It says that it says, I believe in the, in the Apocrypha, it says that um it says um the Lord's mercy is as his throne, and the throne of the Lord is uh inestimable. S something to, I believe it's something like that, something to that effect, you know. But hey, man, basically saying that listen, the Lord is very merciful, man. Okay, the Lord got us, man. Don't don't fret. You see. So continue to read spirit, you know, to the best of your ability. Send up praise for that, you know. And hey, man, don't lose your cool, man. You know, you know, a real spirit. Don't lose your cool and remain faithful and and, re and remain patient, man. Okay. So that being said, I just want to say, call Lame La, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kakwadash. 
Though but honor be unto the elder apostles of great millstone that do rule and teach well. And once again, I want to say shalom to you, Anki Mount there that's pushed in his truth, through his spirit, through the power, and through the name of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, and Kakwadash. And Lord's will you edify it. Shalom.